What on earth are these people doing? Find out next on Twits and Pishers. Hi there, it's Christmas bird count season, and we're in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, where they have the biggest Christmas bird count in the entire world. Edmonton, Alberta, in the Parkland region, is the largest city at this latitude in North America. And I'm with uh, Jim and Barb Beck, we're out looking for owls. It's 4.48 a.m. You folks have been up since midnight or so? 11 a.m. to get ready. Oh, midnight man. howling. And we're it's hoping right. to find a saw wet owl here. So bear with us. This is the beginning of a very busy day. That's the tape recorder, not the owl. hear anything. By the way, this sort of playing tapes to attract owls, this is something that, uh, that is only done during this, uh, during this count period. It generally kind of bugs the owls. It's not something you folks do a lot of. Um, Definitely not in city owls. Yeah, right, exactly. So this is just a matter of counting them and uh, we'll see how it goes. People who know much about owls don't usually use this except in a I thought I heard some. You've got a saw wet out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a saw wet owl calling, but it was so far away it was hard to tell it from a backup beeper on a truck. Despite the fact that it will be duly recorded on the bird count, I decided not to include it on our bird list for the show since this is television not radio. This is a lot of fun, you know, you should try this. <laughs> Every year my wife Dina and I sign up for the count, pay our five dollar administration fee, and join six to eight hundred other Edmontonians for a day of winter birding. We take it just seriously enough to have a lot of fun with it, and we often join the gang in Zone 1, where longtime birding friend Jim Butler assembles his troops before sunrise at the local McDonald's restaurant. Twelve, you got one boreal, twelve solwets, and seven great horns. And seven great horns already. That's not bad. Yeah. Any, any records in sight there? Or is it well, we're, we're trying, we're trying for a second boreal will make, we'll tie the record. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Okay, so there's still... Yeah, what we're really shooting for this morning is we're trying to beat Palo Alto, California. <laughs> really, <laughs> they have 42 solid owls. A few years ago, the record for solid owls was 22, and it was held by Point Reyes, California. The following year, we matched that, but we couldn't get the 23rd owl. Got a boreal. Well, what do you got? <laughs> you got a boreal owl? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, wonderful. it's across at zone 10. It's our owl, Lisa. It's, it's our, our owl, it's our, right? it's our right. boreal. And that, now that gets us tie the Edmonton record, Jim? Yeah, it's Canadian record, Edmonton. too. Okay, but we still haven't reached Palo Alto. Now, this, they have 42 saltwood owls, and you've got one more this morning? I got one more this morning. We've got yeah. a ways to go. We're yeah. up to how 13 many? now. 13, oh 13 is a, a good one, but do. we still have owl <laughs> counters. They've been out since, what time did you start, Jim? Midnight. See, we've had people I didn't all sleep night. in till seven like you did. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> I just want to wish you once again. Can thank you for coming out this morning. This is the you know the 94th Christmas bird count ever since uh, you know Frank Chapman started the thing in 1900. So this is a very important tradition that we're taking part in. And I remind you that here in your Edmonton team, this is the, the largest bird count in the world. So I wish you real well. One of the things we want to watch for right at the crack of dawn are short-eared owls. This is a year where we've got some short-eared owls in. 
And so they'll be flying around. Remember that erratic flight like bats? That they'll be, you know, flying very erratically over the fields, this sort of thing. And they'll be sitting on fence posts. And so watch and scan those distance fence posts really well today. Remember, every one of these birds counts. They're really important. And remember, we're pushing again for a world record, which we already hold for chickadees, for magpies. We're not going to get it for merlins or bohemian waxwings this year. That's just not a year for bohemian waxwings, and then the merlins come in for them. But we still have a very good chance to set a world record, to beat our own world record for black cap chickadees and magpies. So uh, uh, Gordon Elderbrand's already out at one of the big roosts. How many fly out of that roost, Jim, that he's out there waiting? 75 to 200 magpies. Uh, 200 magpies coming out. And so uh, some of you will be meeting magpies. And don't forget, all those are important. And every woodlot at least has a pair of chickadees. It only takes about, uh, you know, anyway, it takes a small, small, about one hectare to support a pair of chickadees. We have also have reports. Jim, you had a, a goshawk down here scouting, I guess, again. So we have a good chance to see them flying around. But watch for those jerfalcons. I got a jerfalcon, I think it was last year, down in our zone here, right, ab right above me. And I thought it was, I drove up under it thinking it would be a goshawk, and it was a jerfalcon. You know, talk all day or bird life. <laughs> That's right. I know. So good luck, good counting. We'll see you at 12 o'clock at the meeting place at the University Farm. Okay. Again, if you need more checklists, there's a whole pile of them here. And away we went into the early light with great hopes for the day ahead. Jim Butler invited me to join him on his Christmas bird count birding beat through White Mud Creek Ravine, which is a deep valley cutting through the heart of South Edmonton. Here, the mature spruce and poplar habitats make this a dandy spot for birds typical of the northern forest. Uh, uh, Pinches? No, it must have been waxwings. Oh, waxwings. Bo oh, bohemian yeah. waxwings. That just flew over the treetops. No, they just kept on going. I would guess about nine of them. Yeah, yeah. This is a low count for bohemian waxwings. You know, we hold the world record, as you know, sure, John. You sure. helped us get that. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah I've been watching for these. the uh, typical trees with the bark flicked off of them. Yeah, it's a good spot, and I've, I've got them more than once along this mm -hmm. particular stretch. Oh, Jim, I forgot to tell you. I've got good news and bad news. What's that? The good news is, on the way here from the McDonald's, we saw a rough-legged hawk. You got a rough-legged yeah, hawk? Yeah, yeah. Right wow. on, a nice, beautiful, we got videotape of it and everything. Blue Oligopus, and yeah. it was sitting right out there. Sitting right out there, and here's the bad news, in zone two. In zone two! <laughs> no. But were you in zone one when we, you saw Well, we were right on the border, <laughs> see? And we were, in, we were in the right lane, which probably puts us on the, you know, on the zone two side of the border. Oh, the zone two are the Canadian wildlife biologist people. Mm -hmm. And so there's a good chance they sleep in, you know. Oh, they might have missed. I, su yeah. I suspect they did. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That made probably the only one for the count, John. Well, sometimes you just hear that very soft tapping of the three toes. A little flaking. Yeah, right. They're not very noisy. Mm. So how how long have uh, have Canadians been participating in the in the Christmas bird count, Jim? Well, I guess the first one, actually, in the, in the first 25 counts, two of those were Canadian in 1900. In 1901, no one, no Canadians cities took count, took, took uh, place mm -hmm. uh, there. But then in 1902, there were more again, and they started after that. Was that, uh, 1902, was that the infamous PEI? Yeah, you you remember that one? Yeah. Well, I wasn't there myself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was that was infamous because that happened to be the only count in history where not a single bird was recorded on the Christmas count. Yeah. One yeah. person went out and it was so cold he declared that that every bird must have been <laughs> swept south from Prince Edward Island and and uh, recorded no birds during the Christmas bird count Yow. of 1902. Never since has a single count never produced a single bird. <laughs> right. Well, there's still, there's some counts that just just uh, send in numbers of ravens from the far north, aren't there? Yes, oh, yeah. and they never even see them in daylight. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> right. With flashlights. I don't know why they do it. It's totally dark yeah. around the dumps. I guess some people might make fun of us, too, out counting chickadees in sub-zero weather, but I can't think of a better way to spend a winter morning.
it's usually right here you get at least 40 chickadees today we've got three or four around this <laughs> oh that's about all it's a goshawk immature, oh, okay. immature goshawk yeah yeah right it's an immature isn't it fantastic look at it is oh sure it's a it's a really streaky bird he must have thought there was something to eat here i've never had a goshawk that's why there's only three or four chickens. Yeah, eaters. right. Sure. Yeah, no, a bird like that will just put the fear into the other ones. See alone? Yeah. It looks like it's, it's that's, a young one. Boy, that's a. You know, that's a. Uh, that's the 199th bird that we've seen since we right? started doing this series. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Oh, it's nice to see. It's it's uh, it's becoming less and less common too, isn't it? It is. It's a, it's a bird of the old growth forest. Mm -hmm. And here we are at the southern edge of the boreal forest right now. But it's a, they have to have maybe 400 hectares for a pair of those to nest in and, and a lot more to forage. And uh, <laughs> usually this is a bird that, that you, you'd only just sort of glimpse, you know, as he, as he goes by for a few seconds. And yeah, yeah. That long rudder tail which guides them oh. through the trees and little short wings which they kind of flap and glide with. And, they're made for the woods, great big long talons to, to get birds with. And that's why we only got three or four chickadees right sure, here. That, well, if I was a chickadee, I'd be anywhere else. I would not. <laughs> I would too. No wonder they're sitting tight. Anything's fair game to a goshawk. Sure. You know, from chickadees to grouse. Well, maybe we're just as big a surprise to him as he is to us. Oh, there's that's a, a white, woodpecker. Just a, was that woodpecker a, or not? That, which is it? Um, I think we're not, looking we're at two right. different birds. Downy woodpecker. Oh, there I've got is. it yeah. now. Yeah. Good. He maybe he doesn't know that that goshawk is still yeah, sitting. Yeah. Otherwise, it'll be yeah, one less. At least we counted it while it's alive. It's part of the count. <laughs> <laughs> so if he eats it, there he goes. Flew right, flew right over his head. Like, oh yeah. Oh, and the hawk. Oh, is, that's a little foolish woodpecker. There, the hawk's down. waiting for something better. Huh? He, he saw him. Did you see him? Yeah. Following? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, let's move on, John. I think uh, if we go over this way, we still have a chance, maybe. Of, Flushing a grouse and maybe okay. maybe still we haven't, a we haven't got our three-toed woodpeckers yet. Yeah, this yeah. is a good spot. The open water on the North Saskatchewan River is another great spot for birds. This young male common goldeneye unfortunately fell asleep on the ice and woke up frozen to it. And just as we were planning a daring rescue, he managed to get free although one of his wings looked quite badly iced up. You know, if I were a duck in Edmonton, I would definitely resist the temptation to stick it out on the open water below the power plants. I would migrate, but then I'm not a duck, so what do I know? Once the duck was free, I joined Terry Thorman, our friend Ken, and my wife Dina for some more river watching. You don't have as much open water here this year as you usually do, Terry. It's been, well, not quite as much. Yeah. It's been cold up till now. We don't really need that much open water. I mean, we had the uh, yeah. yellow-billed loon on a patch about the yeah. size of a living room two years ago. Sure. Sometimes uh, small small patches will turn up some unusual yeah. birds. Okay. Hey, we got some mallards coming here, John. Oh, coming down. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a drake, a uh, couple of drakes, I think. Any, is that one of the Yeah. The shore? You're probably getting a much better view through that scope, Terry. Yeah, yeah, much better. I can see a lot of the detail. Yeah. Oh, and there's a hen coming in uh, in behind the three. Yeah. Well, that's all right. That's what you expect. Mallard and uh, common golden eye is your most that's, common duck here. Uh, that's about it. Yeah. yeah. No, we're pretty lucky in this area, anyways, if we get anything else. Yeah. Uh, Any uh, mergansers this year? I haven't heard, but uh, of course, I haven't really heard from any of the other groups. I'm not sure what they've had. Yeah, so. right. Yeah. We'll just have to wait and see. We'll find out tonight. Big ground up. Yeah, I can hardly wait. Yeah. Can, well, oh, here comes uh, two mallards up there. Both drakes again. Ah, huh? oh, lovely. Very nice. So Christmas bird counts are a lot of fun, but what about the scientific value of Christmas bird count data? Well, let me give you one guy's opinion. Christmas bird counts, the way I see them, they're very good for determining the presence or absence of particular species of birds in particular places. Of course, there's always going to be a few rare things that avoid detection in every count, 
The difficulty comes when you try to use Christmas bird count data to determine which birds are more common, the relative abundance of birds, and when you try to compare one count with another count or one year with another year. The problem is that things just aren't standardized. We don't standardize who gets to go out on the count. We don't standardize exactly where you go and how long you spend in each particular place and so on. And of course you can't standardize things like the weather. So you have to keep in mind that the main reason for Christmas bird counts is to pr promote awareness and appreciation of birds. And although some people do criticize us here in Edmonton for having too big a count, I still believe the more the merrier. More magpies too. Merry as you can get. Merry Christmas. For those who don't feel like hiking around outside, feeder watching is another way to participate in the Christmas bird count. My birding buddy Pat Marklevitz watches his feeder each year, and his house near the river valley was the next stop on our Christmas bird count tour. Well, listen, you got the, exactly the right kind of day for it here. You couldn't take the window out if it was minus 30. And how yeah, it's, wind could... it's decent. We've had some bad Christmas counts here where you walk for several hours and see two or three species yeah, or something. Right, so yeah, right, yeah. This is quite good. There's been a fair amount of stuff coming in over the day to the house. What, what, what have you had so far? Downies and nuthatches, black caps. I had uh, about 60 or 70 house sparrows. I had a white-throated sparrow until about a week ago, but I haven't seen him oh, lately. Yeah, an immature, mm -hmm. looking very unhappy and cold that he'd been left behind. So, oh my, uh, whether yeah, he, so he might not have made it. To... Whether he slugged it through to this date, I don't know. So how, how many hours are you going to put in at the, at the feeder here today? Off and on, I'll probably put in about four because I'm doing mm -hmm. a lot of the, uh, for Dave Nadeau, I'm doing, his people are calling in to me. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, from the other feeders. He needed someone to stay in a house and do that. So I went out and walked my area in the morning for a couple of hours. And then I'll sit here. I'll do my counts off the feeder, various things that are coming in. And then uh, people will phone in or I'll phone into them and compile it for him. Oh, so for yeah, the for, right, the, yeah. for the big tally tonight. All the, all the feeder watcher data. Yeah, and with this, with, with watching it all day, it's, uh, you know, I'll just do the high counts, like, you know, how many chickadees I have at one time. It's, it's Oh, sure, you never know. You could be counting the same bird 50 times coming in for... Yeah, and, and with the things like the sparrows, it's going to be an estimate. Yeah. 60 plus or 80 plus or yeah. something like that. No juncos? Uh, this they never stay here over winter. They mm -hmm. stay late and they all, no matter how, you know, sort of uh, how well they're fed and how uh, regular they're coming, all of a sudden one day they're all gone. Hmm. You know, uh, and that kind of... Well, I wonder if they need uh, springs, open springs along the river. Some, some of the uh, spots further west in town seem to have juncos all through the winter and there are a lot of springs there. Actually, when you go down further down mm -hmm. here too, there's a spring, and there's off, no, no, when you yeah. mention it, there, yeah. there's often a pair or a trio of juncos there late on in the year. Great horned owls? Never seen one, oddly enough. I would have thought I would get them here, but I've never seen them flitting by. Is that just a house sparrow? It didn't look quite right, did it? It's a little small. Yeah. Hmm. One of those passing bird moments that leave you wondering. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that was something really rare that was very interesting. The days are short in the Edmonton winter, and before we knew it, it was time for the count call, the big tally, the roundup. Compilers were compiling, potluckers were enjoying each other's cooking, and the excitement continued to build. Beginning in 1986, the mayor of Edmonton sent a challenge to other mayors in other Canadian cities to mount a larger Christmas bird count than ours. This is Jeff Holroyd. He's the, uh, the count coordinator. Jeff, how have those other cities done? Well, they're shaping up pretty good. Edmonton's uh, starting to whip them into shape. Uh, in um, uh, Quebec City, they actually started a new count in response to our mayor's challenge and went out on the plains of Abraham and counted birds and the mayor went with the group. This was the first one ever for The that. first one ever. Oh, that's not bad. That was yeah. great. In Victoria, they've had one for many years. Um, we challenged them to have more people than we did and they wrote back and said the objective was to count birds and although they couldn't beat us in people, they beat us in birds. So both mayors won and there were no losers in that case. For those of you who don't live in Edmonton, I apologize if we seem to be gloating a bit here. Remember, it's just a bird count.
I think we'll just do all the door prizes right now because we have six items. The Christmas bird count call begins with plenty of door prizes and we were all mighty pleased when Larry the Sound Man won a copy of Jeff Holroyd's book on mountain birds. After you finish this series on bird watching, you'll be hooked on these anyway. You'll need all these guys. Black-billed magpies. World record set 1988 Edmonton, Alberta, Canada with 3,219. Okay, the world champion city capital of the black-billed magpie this year. Will we do it? 3,219 and CNN is on the air waiting to know. 15 has won. That was it? And that gives us this year? New world record. New world record? Look at that. And both calculators say 3,350. 3,350. Woo, boy. Did we or did we not get a brown creeper? I asked the question. We got one over there. Good for you, Eric. 295. Well, I don't know what happened. You remember Friday night? Okay, now, where are we on our count? We've just finished the B list, and we're about to enter into the impossible. So, what do we have? One here. I see a hand in the back. That's not enough hands. Okay, Jim. A bard owl in Canary Oh, a bard owl in Canary Graveen. Oh, 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 Okay. So, we got a bard owl. You got the... <laughs> that was the courtship call. <laughs> Is there two hands up? Two hands are up there? You share them with us. Okay. Lesser skull. Lesser skull. There we go. Lesser skull. Okay, now that's eight. on the list. Now the other one, is is that ever been on the list? Well, that's back to the buffle head. Uh, it landed. <laughs> and on closer examination, uh, it turned out to be a female harlequin. Whoa! Oh, wow. Female harlequin duck no. is what he's saying, that he saw. Now, now that was referred to the jury and... Uh, yes, we uh, discussed it and I'm sure that that's what it was from the identification features that were seen. Yeah. Okay, that's, where was that hanging around? Gold bar, Gold bar. Uh, sewage outfall. Okay, Gold Bar again. <laughs> Favorite spot. We'll place assume, unless, unless that's a, some changes made, and that would take it up to 57, which ties the Edmonton record. And we have two hypothetical waiting to be confirmed, which means we've at least tied our best count of all times, and we may have had the best count of all time. My congratulations to all of you. The 1995 count recorded 57 species in total, and the hypotheticals did not pan out. However, the next day I went down to see the harlequin duck and found two other species not recorded on the count, the bufflehead and the green-winged teal. For our television crew, the total was much lower, but we are now at 199 species, and I can hardly wait for number 200, although I'm a bit worried that life might lose some of its meaning once that goal has been achieved. Well, there you have it. A good day's work on, I've got to say it one more time, the biggest Christmas bird count in the world. It's five after nine, and there are still some people heading off into the bush to see if they can get a few owls before midnight, me, I'm going to head home and get a good night's sleep. And, oh, don't forget to tune in next time. We're, well, we're going to go back to that, uh, you know, that warm southern kind of birding that we enjoy so much. Not that I have any complaints about this kind of thing, but it's great. If you haven't participated in a uh, Christmas bird count before, give it a try next year. If you have, stick at it and remember the Edmonton Challenge. 
So until next time, happy birding. See you later. Here are the top five choices in the Rename This Show contest. Send in your vote for the best title and stay tuned for the winner just three weeks from now.